Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Crafty Gal Confessions. My daughter is obsessed with Bluey, and let's be real, so am I, because if you know, you know, am I right, parents? That's why this year we decided to pair up with her Bluey-loving bestie and create a DIY costume inspired by our favorite characters. This DIY is broken up into three separate parts. Here in part two, we're creating an ear headband and a clip-on tail from yarn. The great thing about this project is that you can very easily adapt it using different colors and it'll create something else entirely. My design actually pulled inspiration from a fox-themed DIY by a fellow blogger. I'll be sure to link that in the description for you. But I'm picturing this set as a wolf, maybe even a colorful unicorn. But if Bluey isn't your thing, you can totally get creative here. Be sure to head on over to my blog post where you will find the full list of supplies needed, including the exact yarn and felt colors that I used for this project. Now let's get started. Of course we do need to talk about the supplies first. So here is a full list of everything you are going to need for each piece. A couple things that I do just want to quickly touch on. First being the pom-pom maker and the cardboard that I have listed out as optional items. These are totally based on preference and are not necessary. You can bypass them using just your hands. You will in fact see us creating pom-poms and tassels using only our hands as well as these tools within the video, so you can decide what looks easiest for you. Also, I have created a printable cut guide for the earpieces of the headband. That can be found on my blog and is available to you for free. This is not necessary and it can be free handed, but I decided to go ahead and create that just to save you some guesswork. We are going to be making mini pom-poms used for the ears and tassels used for the tail. To start off each tutorial, I'm first going to show you two different methods for making these pieces, either with the tools that I listed as optional on the supply list or with just your hands. You're actually going to see a spare pair of hands in this tutorial, and that's because I had a mama friend here helping me with the project. And the reason that I'd like to show you both options is because she and I actually found different methods to be easier. We have a ton of these pieces to get through, so just choose whichever method feels most seamless for you. Also keep in mind that we're going to be giving both the ears and the tail a major groom in the end, so you do not need to worry about each piece being 100% perfect or uniform. What you do need to pay close attention to is making sure that you tie that knot at the end as tightly as you can. This is going to help ensure you don't have any loose threads falling out of your finished pieces. For the ears, we are going to need 30 mini pom-poms, about an inch and a half in diameter, to completely cover the back and the edges of the ears. Using my hands, I'm slightly spreading three fingers and wrapping about 20 times around those fingers, then cutting off the yarn and sliding the bundle off. I'm then carefully holding it all together while I snip myself off another short little piece of yarn and then use that to tie tightly around the center of the bundle Finish it off by cutting open the loops and cleaning up the shape. Using the tool, I'm opening up both layers of the tool arms and wrapping the yarn about 20 times around each side, strategically placing the cut ends of the yarn around the outer perimeter of those arms. Then close it all back up and cut another short piece of yarn. Snip the yarn open around the edges, tying that piece of yarn nice and tight around the center of the pom-pom into the gap of the tool. Then pull the tool apart to remove and again clean up the shape a bit. 
You'll notice that the one made with the tool does look a little bit nicer, but it is not going to be a noticeable difference once they're attached to the ears. In these videos, you're going to see me exclusively working on the bingo version of this set. You can find all the still shots from the bluey version on my step-by-step -step blog post. While my friend is working on those 30 pom-poms, I go ahead and move forward with the rest of the headband. I begin wrapping the plastic headband with the same yarn used for the pom-poms. I start with just a little dab of hot glue on the underside of the headband to hold the cut end of the yarn in place. Then I wrap back over that glued spot to conceal and secure that end. Then I proceed to wrap and wrap until I get to the other end of the headband. For this end, I use another dab of hot glue, but I try to keep that glued spot as neat as possible by actually letting it cool off just enough so that I can touch it without burning myself. Then I press and wipe with my fingers to clean it up a bit. Make sure it seems nice and secure before you go ahead and snip that off. Next, I'm preparing my cut guide to create the felt ear pieces. This is also noted on the guide, but you are going to need two of the smaller inner ear pieces and four of the larger outer ear pieces. For Bingo's ears, I'm using a darker orange for the outer ear that perfectly matches the darker orange yarn I'm using for the pom-poms and a lighter orange for the inner ear. Before we move on, stack your felt pieces and make sure that you understand how those pieces will be layering together. You wanna make sure that you are having each ear mirror each other, not be identical. I'm using pipe cleaner to stabilize the inside of the ears and attach those ears to the headband. You'll notice that I did pick an orange color pipe cleaner, but that's just because I happen to have it. You do not have to have matching, it will be concealed. Start by folding your pipe cleaner in half and pinching that fold to a nice point. This piece is going to be sandwiched between the two outer ear felt pieces. To attach the pipe cleaner, apply hot glue in an upside down V shape, outlining one of your outer ear pieces fairly close to the edge. Then place your pipe cleaner directly onto that glue before it cools. Add a little more hot glue to the top of the pipe cleaner and then you can go ahead and put your second layer of the outer ear over the top of that and press it in place. You'll have a gap around the edges of the ear. You can go ahead and put a little hot glue in that gap and fuse it together by pinching with your fingers. But be careful here not to burn yourself. Also, this will be completely concealed by the pom-pom, so don't worry if it gets a little messy. Now apply a little glue to the smaller inner ear piece and attach that to the front. Once you've got both ears done, it's time to decide where the ears will be placed on your headband. Place both ears fairly close to the top since the healers do have very upright ears. And their ears are a little cupped also, so I did choose to attach them in a way that would create a slight bend in the inner ear. Go ahead and wrap the pipe cleaner around the headband a couple times to secure it and snip off the excess. Now we can move forward with attaching our mini pom-poms to the ears. I start by lining the edges of the ears using a bead of glue close to the center of each pom-pom and then pinching that right over the edge. I used six pom-poms total on the edge of each ear. Then I'm going to flip over to the back side and start filling that in bouncing between the two ears so that I keep things uniform as I go. You can see I've also gone ahead and set aside two pom-poms for each ear. I intend to attach those to the front. I just set them aside so I wouldn't forget. Squeezing as many pom-poms in as I can get, filling in all the gaps until I'm happy with that. Then I'll flip back over to the front and apply those two to the base of each ear. Then I see I do actually still have a couple of extra pom-poms, so I flip back and squeeze those in also. Now we're just gonna do a quick check, make sure everything is secured properly. If we do have any wonky or dislodged pieces, go ahead and secure those now with the hot glue. Once everything feels secure, 
now it's time for a haircut. I start by edging up the outside of the ears to give it a cleaner shape, and then I trim the inside of the ears as well to define those lines. Then I'm going to do some trimming to the length of the yarn, and this is where I start to go a little crazy. <laughs> you could do that as well, or maybe don't. That's your preference. Just play with it until you're happy with the look and shape. I'm not going to show you just how much I groomed here, because it was a little excessive. But just as a quick tip while I wrap this up, if you are able to see any of the pipe cleaner at this point, these yarn scraps are perfect for concealing that. Just put a little hot glue over the exposed pipe cleaner, pinch up some of your scrap from the pile, and press that right into the glue. I didn't have to do this on the bingo set, so I don't have any footage of it to show you, but I did have to do it quite a bit on the bluey set, and it worked out great. Our ears are done. And also, here's a cute shot of the bluey set. Okay, and real quick before we move on, I do just want to talk about the eyebrows that you may have noticed in my photos and might be wondering about. These were a last minute addition that I wasn't even sure if we were going to use. I just had the idea literally like an hour before I ran out the door to go take these pictures and threw them together. So I don't have them included in the full tutorial. I'm attaching a close-up just so you can see how I constructed them. They are very simple, just using a piece of felt attached to an alligator clip and then three tiny pom-poms attached to that on each one. I made these pom-poms using the exact same method that I showed you for the ear tutorial. I just made them slightly smaller and thicker, glued those on with hot glue, and was out the door. I did really like this addition. Like I said, I was not sure if I was going to use them, but they actually had a lot of function. For the headband, they formed a barrier that sort of held the headband in place as the girls were moving around. So that actually turned out to be really useful as well as cute. But then they also elevated the look of our Here Come the Granny ponchos. Since we couldn't pair the ears with the ponchos because the hood would not rest properly over the top of the ears, we left the eyebrows on and they just sort of peeked out from the hood and we thought that was really cute. So I was definitely happy with this addition and I just wanted to include this. So hopefully this is helpful if you want to add that as well. Moving on, let's get into that tail tutorial. First, starting with the methods for making your tassels. Using just your hands, measure about a five to six inch length of yarn, and then go back and forth between your two hands, loading a bundle of 21 total strands. That's gonna be 10 and a half full wraps around. Being sure to start and stop with your cut ends on one side of the bundle, snip yourself a piece of yarn and thread that through the end of the loops that does not contain your cut ends. Tie it tightly with a double knot and snip the loops open on the other side. Using the cardboard tool, you're gonna to cut yourself a piece of cardboard similar to what I'm showing here in the video, and that needs to have roughly a five to six inch span on it. Basically, we're just eliminating our hands from this. Everything else is the same. So you're gonna wrap 21 total strands, again, 10 and a half full wraps, tie it off with a nice tight knot, and then snip it on the other end to free it from the tool. We did use about 75 total tassels on each of our tails. If you like the long look of the tails as we did, then I recommend going with roughly a length the same as your child's inseam. But decide that length ahead of time. And because different people will have different preferences for length, I recommend working on your tassels in batches making a batch of 10 to 20 of them and then installing them on the tail as you go. That way you have enough to fill it out and stretch your length of tail without going overboard. Once you've decided what you'd like the total length of your tail to be, fold one end of the wire through the loop of the suspender clip, leaving some overlap as I've shown in the photo. Pinch that wire down tight with your pliers to secure it. I just want to say as a quick note, the reason that I added this wire to the tail was to create some structure and formability within the tail. I wanted to be able to bend and manipulate the shape a bit. I did get that to an extent, however I wish looking back that I had actually doubled, maybe even tripled the amount of wire that I used as it would have achieved more of the result that I was looking for. So keep that in mind. 
Also, if you do not care about being able to bend your tail, you could just eliminate the wire entirely. Cut the length of your wire roughly six inches shorter than you'd like your overall tail length to be. While my friend works on all those tassels, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with making the spine of the tail. With the color yarn used for the tip of your tail, in Bingo's case, this is the beige colored yarn, measure out a length of yarn roughly double what you want your tail length to be. Make yourself a bundle of 15 or so pieces with that length. Now thread that bundle through the loop of your suspender clip alongside your wire. Fold it over, that loop is going to give you roughly 30 total strands to work with from here. But before we move forward, let's make things a little easier on ourselves and go ahead and tape that clip down to the surface that you're working on using painter's tape. Section off your yarn into three separate bundles, positioning your wire within the middle of that. We are going to braid down, including the wire within our braid. Don't worry about aesthetics here, this is all gonna be covered up later. Once you've braided far enough down that you've reached the end of your wire, cut off a small piece of yarn and use that to tie around and secure the end of your braid. We do wanna have a few inches of fringe here at the end, but you'll notice that I did cut my yarn way too long, so I have a lot of fringe and I'll trim that off later. Then you want to grab the end of your wire and fold that up into the braid. This is going to remove any sharp edges of that wire that might be pokey later. Let's go ahead and start adding our tassels to the spine working in batches. When I made Bluey's tail, I first thought that the color from the fringe of the spine would be enough of that darker color at the bottom, and I later ended up coming back in and adding more of the dark blue. So this time, I'm starting off with tassels in that beige color for the tip until I get the look I'm going for, then switch over to the orange that will be used for the bulk of the tail. Bingo does also have a smaller spot of darker orange in her tail, so you'll see me throw that in there as well. Tie those tassels on really tightly around the braid with the string that you knotted and secured each tassel with. I'm attaching these tassels in a sort of spiraling effect as I move my way up. Now as I'm nearing the top of the tail, I go ahead and release that from the tape to make it a little easier to work with. I attach a few more tassels to fill out the top, including adding some extra tassels directly onto the suspender clip. I felt that helped clean up and conceal the metal a bit. Once I'm happy with the fullness of the tail, I begin a grooming session. And unfortunately, I did not realize that my side camera wasn't rolling, so I don't have a better angle of this to show you. But basically, I'm blending out the tail by snipping into that length of the tassels, holding my scissors vertically, rotating between holding the tail upright and holding it horizontally while I really get in there and just snip, snip, snip. Again, I'm not going to show you just how much I groomed here because we know it was excessive, but you get the picture. Just go at it until you are happy with the finished result. And that's a wrap. I really love how these pieces turned out, and I know they're going to be getting a long-term home in our dress-up bin. Be sure to head on over to my blog post for the step-by-step -step bluey version of this project, plus all the links for your supplies. And as always, happy crafting.